an emotion is a configuration of cognition, I think. So it's a way in which you relate to yourself and to the world around you. It's not a parameter inside of cognition, it's underlying it. And there's, uh, first of all, there are, you could say, proto-emotional uh, modulators. And these modulators uh, change the way in which you perceive things, in which your cognition works. Uh, some of them are uh, the way in which you evaluate things, so valence dimensions, so whether something feels good or bad, whether it's attracting you or pushing you back. Right? Th these are um, some of the, the valence dimensions. Also, the certainty that you have res with respect to an object, the ability to cope with this object and so on, uh, the urgency uh, that you perceive uh, while having to deal with this object. They're all aspects of, of this space. And there is um, uh, the, the dimension of attention, the attention can be deep. In this case, you are, it also tends to be narrow and it tends to be slow because you need to uh, recover a lot, a lot of detail. And uh, if the attention is shallow, it gives you faster results at the expense of resolution and acuity. And the attention might be directed on perceptual content or it might be uh, directed on reflection and cognition. And um, so it's inward or outward, so to speak. And um, the, the intentional parameters together with the valence parameters uh, uh, put you into a, a state of, uh, in a space of affects. And certain regions in this space of affects have names, right? We call them anxiety or elation or joy or bliss. And they are somewhat culture uh, variant because uh, the, uh, emotions are not natural categories, they're not natural kinds, they are perceptual gestalts that we extract from the space of affects that we are in. And then there are more high level emotions, which are distinct things like, for instance, jealousy. Jealousy is not just an affect, it's a particular type of negative affect uh, that is, uh, could be, for instance, anxiety or uh, fear, which is not quite the same thing. Anxiety is more about uncertainty uh, and inability to cope with the future. Uh, versus um, uh, fear is uh, higher certainty and it has an object. And uh, uh, jealousy requires that you have uh, a need for uh, an exclusive relationship to a partner and a representation that you have this partner and that you might lose it to somebody else. And if any of these elements is absent, you are, will not be able to experience jealousy. Right? You, this negative effect is the result of this experience and the anxiety is a description of the necessary affects. So you don't need to build emotion explicitly into the system. What is required into, uh, to build into the system that has emotion is a set of needs that the system uh, thinks it has or uh, is implemented to have. So it behaves according to these needs and uh, a set of modulators that um, adapt the cognition to a, a given state. And uh, this uh, is all implemented before uh, you are consciously aware of it. This analytic mind is a rather late innovation in terms of cognitive systems. Uh, rather, it has to be implemented on a relatively low level that is somewhat autonomous and doesn't require your conscious interference. So uh, emotions are communicated by the rest of your mind to your symbolic analytic mind via an interface. So a part of your mind that is unable to use language, is unable to manipulate symbols in a discrete manner, has to talk to the part of your mind that is largely conceptual and analytic and linguistic. How do you do this? You need to make them accessible as features in a space, right? And so these valence features in a space where the valence is something like a color and uh, a feeling of goodness or badness. And then you have uh, feelings of expansion and contraction and you need to locate them in a space to make them discernible. And the space that we have always available in our own brain that is always instantiated is the body map. So feelings get projected into the body map to make them distinct. The reason why you feel uh, experience feelings of social connectedness in your chest region is not because your heart is uh, uh, required for computing such feelings. It's uh, just a projection to make it discernible from uh, say uh, existential uh, anxiety, uh, which is, uh, lower in the stomach or uh, uh, feelings of uh, power and competence which are in the region of the solar plexus or of uh, social power which are more in the region of the throat right so uh, th these notions of projecting feelings into the body map is relatively old and i think it's just a biological adaptation that has led to uh, the idea of chakras 
which I think that chakras are visualizations of feelings projected into the body map. So it's ways in which your emotion is configured in a particular uh, context, in a particular situation in your life, uh, being uh, projected into a static model that you can learn to perceive in others and um, basically you integrate all the features that you have available over, the, over that person, uh, over the entire context of the interaction, and then you visualize it and understand this is the state that this person is in. And you do the same thing with yourself. So you perceive your own feelings by analyzing the things that your perceptual mind projects into your body map about the relationship that you currently have as an agent to your environment. Does this make sense? It makes all the sense. It makes all the sense. It's very yeah. Merleau-Pontian um, from the phenomenological background, having the body as the locus mm -hmm. and sense maker. Yes, but I suspect that Merleau-Ponty has confused a lot of people because the body itself is not important for this. The body is, in some sense, the instrument that uh, is inserted by your discovery of the relationship in which you are to your environment. There is stuff that you can, uh, that you sense, that you can immediately control. These are your mental representations. Right? because they are immediate. You can change your ideas about the thing right now. And then there are uh, things that you can change your environment and uh, there are two steps removed. And the thing that is in between the instrument of affecting these changes in the environment before they become perceptible again and the loop gets closed, and, uh, these perceptions then turn into uh, reflections, which are again ideas. Right? Uh, this is the body. The body is the missing link between your intentions and uh, the changes in the environment. And so in this context, the body gets introduced. It's not quite the same thing as the body map. The body map is the thing that we can then uh, infer to be associated with your body. But the body map is a, a way to make sense of a certain modality of data that is available to you as a human being, uh, namely proprioception and the surface of your skin and so on. This, uh, these data fire and are, are arranged in a particular way and we can lump them together because of their statistical properties and they all get routed to the same brain region based on these statistical properties. And this is your body map. And uh, to, to have a, a body map, you don't need to have a body, right? Uh, once the uh, body map is entrained on your brain, I can stimulate the body map and you feel, will feel a sensation as if it was in your body. And uh, that also works uh, if I uh, sever your head uh, at the spine and make it impossible for signals from your body to reach the brain. And uh, conversely, if I uh, sup uh, suppress this connection, I stimulate your body, or if I su uh, suppress the activity in the body map in your brain and stimulate your body, you will not experience it, right? So the body map is necessary and sufficient for having the experience of your body. It's not your body itself. Mm -hmm. So your body isn't actually not involved at all. It's just a mental model that is being in, that is involved here. The mental model is necessary and sufficient for the experience. And of course, uh, the existence of that uh, body map serves a functional purpose for the type of organism that we are. But philosophically, that's not interesting because it would also work if it didn't serve that purpose. It just has to be arranged in this way. The purpose is only the reason that evolution has arranged it in such a way. 